Now that we're recording, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order. This is the May 16th, 2022 meeting of the Town of Arlington uh, Redevelopment Board. I'm uh, the chair, Rachel Zemberry. Uh, this open meeting of the Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely per the governor's extension of the remote meeting provisions due to the state of emergency, due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting, the ARB is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may, may not be able to see you, or excuse me, may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Please do not also share uh, information by changing the uh, background behind you on the computer when you're speaking either. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. At this time, I'd like to ensure that all members are present and can hear me, starting with Ken Lau. Present. Jean Benson. Present. Melissa Tentacolis is absent this evening. And uh, Steve Revelak. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening. We also have two members of the Department of Planning and Community Development with us this evening. Director uh, Jennifer Wright. Present and uh, Assistant Director Kelly Linema. Present. Great, thank you all for joining us and for bearing with us um, this evening. We, our first agenda item is the continued public hearing for uh, environmental design review for docket number 3690 for 34 Dudley Street. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to, um, to Jenny Rate from the Department of Planning and Community Development to see if there's any update that uh, the department would like to provide prior to inviting the applicant to speak. Thank you, Rachel. Um, yes, a quick update is uh, reflected in the memo from the staff, which indicated that the applicant had been responsive to many of the follow-up items requested by the board. Um, we've received uh, many updates to various plans, including the uh, site plan set, uh, various renderings that were requested, um, signage, um, solar uh, design plan, roofing plan rather, um, the, how the trucks can turn on site and the limit of work. Um, and I don't think I have anything in particular to point out about any of these items that I felt were maybe inadequate or needed additional follow-up, but I'll let you decide that. Um, and the other thing is we received some correspondence from, um, from an abutter with regard to uh, whether or not this particular project needed to comply with a couple of different things, which are somewhat one and the same. One is the inland wetland um, district and the other is the floodplain zoning district. Um, this project does not need to comply with either one of those. In fact, it is, uh, it is outside of that. If you look at the wetlands and floodplain maps that are posted on the town of Arlington's GIS page and also in the interactive GIS portal. That said, um, the applicant is fully aware that they need to comply with the town of Arlington's uh, conservation regulation, wetland regulations, which is sort of above and beyond the state's uh, Wetlands Protection Act. So they'll be compliant with both of those and have been engaged with the commission by filing a notice of intent, I believe, um, at this juncture. So they will need to comply with those regulations, but there are no additional zoning regulations related to that particular issue that are in need of com additional compliance. Um, and I think that that summarizes everything and, and provides you with my most recent update about this project. Uh, the applicant has some uh, material that they would like to share this evening as well. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Jenny. Uh, Attorney Anessi, would you like to um, kick us off on behalf of the applicant? Yes, I would very briefly, uh, Rachel. Uh, uh, good evening, Rachel, members of the board, Jenny and Kelly. We have tried to be responsive to the requests of the board and I think uh, Jenny's uh, indication uh, just now uh, uh, demonstrates that. Uh, we uh, essentially went back to the drawing board uh, and uh, made sure that each of the requests made by the members of the ARB were in fact responded to. And I agree with all of Jenny's comments, uh, particularly so with respect to conservation. We have been before conservation. We are going back before conservation again. 
but I believe that the issues that were raised by the abutter um, are really issues that are not relevant uh, and an examination of uh, the, uh, the conservation law by law would indicate that very clearly. Uh, uh, we don't, I don't have a lot of uh, discussion uh, this evening, but I do have is Eric Gerard, who is going from VHB, who is going to make a presentation, PowerPoint presentation. I have members of the balance of the team available for questions, traffic engineer, architect, operational uh, 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 fellow Jesse Morgan and operational fellow Pete Williams. That having been said, I'd like uh, uh, Eric to jump in, uh, give his PowerPoint presentation, and then we can respond to any question uh, questions the members of the board might have. Eric, jump in. Great, thank you very much, Bob. Uh, good evening, thank you very much. Uh, Again, Eric Gerard, I'm a project manager with VHB. Um, and yes, be here before you tonight to, to give you the, the, the updates that we've made since we last met. Um, so next slide, please. Um, essentially running through the project updates since we, we last met, the, the primary comments that came out of uh, the April 27th hearing were architectural, that's supposed to, it's rain leader integration. Um, I apologize for the little, little typo on that first one. Um, the solar rooftop units showing how the, the site could be solar ready with the roof. Uh, signage, the office sign to be non-illuminated. Um, truck turns, providing a truck turn analysis to, to demonstrate um, adequate maneuvering within the site and getting into and exiting the site. Um, and then eliminating the car pool space and adding an employee shower. So the uh, revised material that was recently resubmitted uh, addresses these um, items. Um, we feel that the, the architectural integration um, to, to better integrate those rain leaders um, has been accomplished. Um, additionally, we, we did meet, uh, we were before the Conservation Commission hearing again on May 5th to give them a, a project update since it, it had been about a month since we had started the process with them. So we wanted to give them an update of where we were at um, primarily uh, working through the comments with the, with the redevelopment board um, and, and the good progression there. So we have formally resubmitted to them at the same time that we submitted um, last week uh, with the redevelopment board. And so we're, we're, we're gonna be back before them very soon um, as well. Um, coming out of that, that conservation commission hearing, it was also requested and it was brought up during um, the, these hearings as well. Uh, with the adjacent town-owned parcel um, that we're, we're trying to clean up and pull out um, the existing pavement and clean up that back of slope area. Um, so that is owned by the Park and Rec Department. Um, so we, we did meet with them um, on May 9th. I met with um, the director out there, Joe Conley. We walked the back area um, from the Wellington Park side to view the, the back slope. Um, and then they asked that we, we give a small presentation to the Park and Rec Commission uh, so we did that on, on May 10th. Um, it all went really well. They were uh, receptive of the idea. They didn't have not uh, many questions or issues with the work that we were proposing. Um, we are anticipating a letter back from uh, Mr. Conley uh, stating that uh, to move forward and they could be, I guess, essentially signatory on any sort of filings or approvals moving forward um, as that work begins in coordinating with their department. Um, so next slide, please. So we just wanted to show, I think if you maybe hit spacebar again, it will pop in the next, yeah, there we go. Oop, sorry. So just, just to show you the project um, updates, uh, primarily for the build and architecture, uh, uh, integrating that vertical element on the facade to, to better you know, hide the, the rain leaders coming off of uh, for the roof. Uh, we feel like this is a, this a really good uh, visualization just to show how, how we're achieving that. Uh, also, the, the solar ready screen uh, on the bottom showing the coverage for the solar panels and how that would lay out. Um, the applicant has been in, in discussion um, and, and they got this design from a solar designer. Um, additionally, I believe the the, the screen panels at the rear um, facade were sent into the planning department. 
um, as, as requested. Uh, for the next slide, please. And this is demonstrating one of the truck turning movements that was provided in one of the packages. Uh, the green dashed lines are showing a, a 26 foot box truck entering the site, maneuvering within it, um, and then backing in and then being able to pull out with the red. And as you can see on the bottom um, on Dudley Street, we, we did offset that far curb line eight feet to um, anticipate a potential vehicle being parked there. Uh, we just wanna make sure that the, the truck could still get out. Um, so using the, the, the software that's pretty uh, uh, industry standard, uh, we, are, we are showing and demonstrating that the trucks do, do adequately maneuver. Um, so that, that's primarily the updates that we wanted to present and go through tonight. Um, and certainly available to answer any questions. Rachel, if I might, um, I'm happy to bring up any plans that the board would like while you have a discussion. Um, I have them all available outside of the PowerPoint. So please just let me know. Great, thank you, Jenny. And thank you to the applicant team. I really appreciate the um, thorough response and um, how, uh, how well you responded to each of the uh, questions that were posed during our last hearing. Uh, so I'd like to turn it over to the board members for any questions. Um, I know that we're a bit tight on time tonight. So what I'd love to do is if we could um, pose any questions, then we'll take any public comment and then we'll do a debate and see if we can move this to a vote this evening. So we'll start with uh, Jean. Yeah, thank you and thank you for the presentation and for the changes you've made. I, I just have two or three questions. One was, um, Eric Gerard, you mentioned Solar Ready. I need to understand whether your client is committed to installing and operating solar on this roof or only having a Solar Ready roof. Which is it? Eric, I can. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I'd like Jesse to hop in and, and, and re yeah, I don't want to misspeak on this. So, yes, thank you. No, we, we will deliver solar panels uh, and solar infrastructure as part of our development. And, uh, the, so they will, and they'll be used and operated. Correct. Okay. Correct. It'll All be right. subject to approval from utility, but that is a 52% coverage, which we're very confident we can deliver. But as part of the permitting stage, that's what we're looking to do. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Um, the, the second, and, and this came up last time, which is the retention and treatment of stormwater on site. And when I looked at the drawings of the retention basin, it shows, um, at one point, it shows um, an outflow pipe. So can you explain how you're going to treat and retain all the stormwater on site if there's an outflow, outflow pipe coming from the retention basin. And it's about halfway up the basin. Yep, so that, that basin is there to collect and, and treat the uh, stormwater runoff. So that primarily the treatment train are collecting, collecting the stormwater, either it's running off into the bioretention basin for some initial treatment um, or there's a there's a catch basin on site. We're collecting in that, um, and then that's being discharged into that subsurface infiltration basin. So the the infiltration basin is pro providing that retention and treatment. So the final treatment is within that to meet the standards um, under Mass DEP. Um, and then there is an outlet pipe to be able to control um, the higher higher flows coming off of um, you know large storm events. And, and where would the outlet pipe uh, release the water to? It's going to where it's going under existing conditions. It's, there's an existing outfall pipe there currently. So we're tying back into that pipe. And what, and what level of storm can it retain before it has to release? So the, the initial design parameters that we were designing with in early discussions with the, with the town engineer, um, we were, we were aiming to reduce the future 10 year storm event, which is a pretty decent storm event to be below the existing two year storm event. So we have what I, I would consider a rather extreme requirement in our bylaw. The requirement says, if you exceed the three feet, three stories or whatever the height is, which you're allowed to do and which you're proposing to do, I believe, um, you must retain and treat 
100% of the stormwater on site. Well, in some ways that's impossible because you could have, you know, a 500 year storm and all bets are off for that. But I just feel like 10 year storms happen too often. And if you're going to be releasing water um, during a 10 year storm, you're not complying with that requirement, which is in the bylaw. And um, I'm very concerned about that. And I think something will have to be done about that to meet the requirements. Um, the third has to do with the, the trucks. And, and Jenny, if you could put up um, on the screen that they had four diagrams of the trucks turning in and out. Yeah, that's 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 one. If if you look at almost every one of the truck diagrams except the second one, uh, the truck ends up. Well, this is a, another example. The truck ends up impeding into one of the other truck spaces. This one would not be able to make that turn if there was another truck parked in the top space. If you go back to the previous one, Jenny, um, this one would not be able to make the turn if there was a truck parked in the space next to it. If you go down to the third one, this one, again, it, it gets into the, this one, I'm not sure. It depends how far out the next truck is, but it may or may not be able to make the turn out in the fourth one. This, this, um, this also looks like it couldn't leave if there was a, another truck parked in the space right next to it. Um, so am I misreading these dotted red lines? Let's leave this one up for an example. This does seem to show the truck backing up at an angle, which it would not be able to do if there were a box truck of the same um, size parked in the next aisle. Do you agree or disagree with that? Nope. That, yeah, that, I mean, that's showing it sweeping slightly into the yeah. uh, adjacent space. So, yep. so that's, I think that's a problem. And I don't know whether that could be corrected by having three spaces or 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 something but what this diagram shows me is that you can't make it work um, with the current setup that you have um, and I'll leave other people to talk about the rain leaders so I'm I'm satisfied with the solar I I'm not satisfied with the stormwater retention, and I'm not satisfied uh, now that we've seen the diagrams with uh, the truck turnarounds. That's it for now. Thank you, Gene. Ken, any questions? Uh, can I comment uh, a little bit what, what Gene said? Uh, there's a bollard right there next to the light. Is that correct? Believe that's a Excuse me. Is that a bollard um, or a column? There's bollards and, and then there's columns. So there's bollards protecting the building, and then there's the columns on the interior there. Yeah. So if that column is adjusted a little bit, that would solve it all, wouldn't it? Yeah. In, in speaking with you know the owner and the uh, the applicant, as far as operationally and how this will work, um, we we do have the extra space in there. And this is just demonstrating, you know, how the largest truck, you know, can maneuver in and out of, of each space. Um, we're not fully anticipating to, to have this and it's an active loading area. Um, if, if, you know, vehicles need to move as well, um, they can shift and adjust um, in the site. <clears throat> Yeah, if I, if I might just add really quickly, Ken, I was thinking the same thing, but I, I sort of decided that was a column and they would have to redesign uh, part of the building. It's not simply a bollard there. Okay. 
Uh, fair enough. I, I, I just didn't know why it was, you know, if you move it out a couple of feet and make it, you know, make it, it's, it's in that drive lane there. You, you don't really see it architecturally. Um, you know, it wouldn't be that bad. Um, I think your treatment, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get off that subject now. And uh, the treatment for um, the down leaders are better is it's uh it's um I, i'll just say it's better I'm, I'm not totally happy with the way it looks right now um richard could probably uh, expand a little bit more yeah, on I'll this address um uh, but I, mm -hmm. i'll say it's better but it's not quite what we're looking for and uh, i couldn't find um did you guys get rid of the pylon sign or it's still there? Monument sign, Ken? It was removed. That was in, I think, Jenny's memo. Correct, Jenny? Yeah, the monument sign. Yes, the mon that yes, was, removed. was removed. But I can put up that. Was? Okay. No, it's fine. That's all I need. Um, right now, um, I think if you address Gene's issue about the um, stormwater by just adding a few more, um, capture the tenure. And uh, the only issue I have now is just um, that one column. But you, if you're saying that that is a, in which, how, where did they pull in and everything else? Because I'm sure those lines, are those lines the full extent of the truck? A 30 foot truck in there, or is it just a, a spot that's sort of designated with some dashed lines? Uh, can you, you know, something that could be shown with just trucks and park cars in there. This way, it, it'll be easier for us to understand, um, you know, saying that it's, it's doable, it's not interfering. And can they did have a diagram, a different diagram that showed a truck parked in there, and the truck took up about the entire length of the spot. So that's why. I raised the issue of the problem with them maneuvering the truck if there was a truck in the next space. Okay, uh, which one, where was that? It was not one of these diagrams. It wasn't it was the turning else. diagram. It was no, it wasn't the turning diagram, it was somewhere else. Sorry, I, I don't, um... I don't Eric, remember. Can you tell one. me which one that would be in? And Rachel, it might have been just that you, colored. Just it might that. be just the colored overall site plan. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's in this. It might just be uh, if it might be on the first page of the PowerPoint that that colored site plan. Well, it was in one of the materials we received for tonight. And what what are we looking for in that? Just to confirm that the truck takes up the full space. Yeah, I think that's if 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 yes. we could just push the trucks back a little bit, um, you know, it, it'd be fine, but. I, I'm not as concerned as Gene about this because the, 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 the fact of having two big trucks at the same time that's, and also the 30 footer are typically not normal. Uh, and, and the fact that the, the, the issue of this is happening within the property, it's not outside the street or anything like that, where it'd be more of a problem for me. Uh, you can come and go into the project, no problem, and they can deal it logistically on their own if it is a problem. Um, I know those turning radius are maybe um, uh, lack, I mean, they're very uh, generous. So, so I, I know a truck can do better than that, but that's just the way it is, you know, uh, what they show on the, on, the, on the turning radiuses. Do you agree with that, Eric? Yeah, in these, Programs tend to be pretty conservative as well um, on the on the movements. Um, so yeah, talking with the with the applicant there, 
you know, confident that with their operations that it, it it's not going to be an issue. I'll leave it up for now, Rachel. I mean, uh, you, you can circle back on the on the rain leaders. I think uh, you have yep. a better idea what you want to do with that. Absolutely. Um, so I'll just come in on that because that's really my only um, my only item that I wanted to to raise is that um, I, I agree with Ken. I think it's better. It's not. Um, there, it's still awkward. Um, and I think just simply you kind of have this stepped uh, articulation um, as you as you go towards the, the top of the rain leader. And I honestly think that just a single vertical element um, would would be a lot cleaner, simpler, and um, you know it would it would align with the rest of the very modern expression of the building. So, I think if you got rid of the steps and just kept the widest point at the bottom and brought that all the way up to the to the um, to the top, you know, keep you can keep your breaks. Um, I'd be happy to kind of mark that up, and, and you know, we can deal with that with the department afterwards. But I, I think that kind of a clean approach might be a little bit um, better and in keeping with the rest of the the design of the building. Uh, my that's my only comment, Steve. I'll uh, run to you next. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> I was going to bring up the question of, you know, this is, I, I, I also wanted to discuss the, how the board, how we as a board want to interpret the um, treat and retain, retain and treat all stormwater requirement on site, but I think that might be uh, best left for the follow up deliberation. Um, regarding the truck turning radius. Um, in the event, you know, I mean, we've brought up the proposal of moving one of the columns. Um, I, I suppose one could also move the loading dock, you know, exterior wall back a few feet. Um, for the applicants, I'm wondering if it is feasible to restrict the size of vehicles to, you know, like large, less than 26 feet. So say a 24 or a 22 foot truck. Jesse, Jesse. Well, I see Pete taking himself off mute, so I'll defer to him. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I mean, it's it's certainly possible. I mean, it's uh, you know to go to the largest truck being a twenty four foot. I would just say that you know practically, practically the only parking that gets done on the site. Is are the spaces that are up closest to the office, uh, and you know, candidly, if you ask us how many parking places we need for a self storage facility, we would tell you four. Uh, we realize that the requirement is the requirement, but from a practical standpoint, nobody's going to park a car. That self storage is just a place where people come to, they do their business they leave uh, so even you know in all of our properties throughout the country if if there's ever someone that th there's a lot of there's cooperation that takes place in the loading area amongst tenants and and the customers it's not like there's like a car that's left there and it's like oh you know this might be here for a day or two uh, everyone that's there, especially back towards the loading area, is an active participant in going in and out, taking stuff from their vehicle back too. So I don't know. It's uh, you know, I mean, what 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 we have proposed, like we we would never we would never be satisfied with a loading area and parking situation that doesn't work uh, because you know it, that's that's important i mean we're we build these things for the customers Thank so you. you know i i don't know that's really what i say i mean we have we could i guess if we had to but it works for 26 foot for us okay thank thank you very much steve does that answer your question yeah i mean, in i understand mr benson's point um and he's you know i think it's worthwhile to look at the worst possible case scenario of you know, they're the highest utilization scenario of 426 foot trucks. 
all arriving at the same time. Um, having worked at a place where, you know, we had a loading dock that was a little undersized and shippers kept sending us big trucks that wouldn't fit. I, I am also of the belief that in the, you know, to a certain extent, physics will govern this sort of thing. If the, if the truck isn't going to fit, it's not going in. <laughs> so, and I, I think that given their line of work, there's probably the uh, necessary expertise to manage that sort of thing. Um, that is it. That's all I have. That's all for me, Madam Chair. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up for public comment. Um, we are very tight on time and we have one other um, hearing that we need to still get to this evening and the applicant for that is here. So I'm going to um, close public comment um, a little after 7.20 um, because we are going to need to move to board discussion and um, discuss next steps for the applicant. Uh, so any member of the public wishing to speak on this application, please use the raise hand function um, at the bottom of your screen. I'll call on you when the order hands are raised. Um, you'll have up to three minutes to address the board. And um, we uh, please uh, introduce yourself by your first, last name, and address. And we'll start with Don Seltzer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. I have two brief remarks. Um, Continuing... Uh, we'll, we'll be getting to you uh, shortly, Melanie. Thank you. Go ahead, Donna. I restart your time. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, continuing with Jean's comments, the loading bays appear to be less than 24 feet deep, but the trucks can be 34 feet long. They will stick out about 10 feet and block other vehicles. Vertic a vehicle turning radii diagrams typically show the wheel tracks it should be remembered that the front corners of the cab trace out a wider arc by about a foot or two, and the rear overhang sweeps out to an even wider path. I, I trust that the applicant's analysis has considered this. Otherwise, it will be very entertaining to watch amateur truck drivers bouncing off the building columns. My other comment, I would like to remind the board of the environmental design standards specifically standard I on safety. At the last hearing, I attempted to ask a question that related specifically to the safety standard, but the chair ruled that these were not issues of concern for the ARB and would be dealt with instead by the building department at some point down the road. I will not press this any further, but will instead refer it to the inspectional services when final plans are submitted for a building permit. And that is regrettable because the concerns I have are related to state law. If it had been addressed at the previous hearing, I believe that the problems could have been corrected in time for tonight's hearing. But a few months from now, corrective action will be costly and will introduce delay. Thank you, that's all. Thank you. Um, and Nellie, again, I see that your hand is raised or you're the applicant for the, um, the next hearing, correct? Jenny, who's the applicant for the next no hearing? No entiendo nada. Discúlpame. Buenas noches. No entiendo nada. Creo okay, we, haber, we're not. Creo we're not haber entendido. Yet. We're not at your hearing yet. This is for the one prior. Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to need oh, to hold on, please. That's okay. None of this. Oh, is, sorry, sorry. No sorry, problem. Disculpa. I will, we, we will get to you no later than seven thirty. I promise. Thank you for your patience. You, you muted her, yourself, Rachel. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> Seeing no other hands raised, we'll go ahead and close public comment um, for uh, this agenda item and I'll turn it back to the, the board for discussion. And I think there are, um, I, I feel confident that my comments could be addressed um, through some final revisions and staff. Ken, I don't know if you agree with the design um, direction that I provided, just straightening out and making this a little bit cleaner. <clears throat> yes, I do. Okay. So the other two items that I um, see here are any um, additional studies that we'd want to see regarding the truck turning diagrams um, and the question about treating and retaining stormwater on site and what, um, what's, what 
storm event is required, which um, is not clear in, in the zoning bylaw. And um, I think we should, Steve, to your point, I know that you wanted to discuss that. So why don't we start with, with you, Steve, um, and we can, we can go from there. Right. I, I think it is possible to read the requirement mm -hmm. to retain and treat in a way that could not be satisfied by any stormwater management system that relied on groundwater recharge, which is, all, it, and at least in my layperson's understanding, um, probably a lot of them. Um, so I, I think that the intent when we were drafting this in the zoning bylaw working group, um, was that, you know, there should be no untreated runoff from the site. Um, you know, to me, retaining is part of, you know, is part of the treatment process. Um, and I would rather see, you know, a controlled over mechanism of overflow than an uncontrolled one. But, you know, this still raises the question of, well, what, how much, how big of a storm um, does the, the capacity, do you need to provide the capacity to handle? And, you know, there, as you said, there isn't a whole lot of guidance in the bylaw about that. Um, so, I mean, I am personally comfortable with the, you know, with what the applicant has proposed, um, you know, and I, I think it's made a, um, you know, it has definitely made an improvement um, in the, you know, made a reduction in the amount of, you know, flow offsite at least based on the stormwater management report that we received from the last meeting, but um, I'd like to hear my fellow board members takes on that. You know, I'll go to you next. I think I'm comfortable with that too. Uh, what Steve just said, I, I, I believe what he's saying is, is correct. If there is, uh, if there's any extra capacity that we can uh, to maybe up the, uh, storage capacity, I would suggest maybe we look into that, but I think uh, I'm comfortable with what they've done. They've, they've done quite a bit here already. Uh, there is an option to, um, Jenny, I know that the applicant is already working with the um, town engineer on several items. One of the items we could put in as a special condition is um, to have the applicant work together with the town engineer to um, appropriately address the, the level of storm. I mean, again, absent of us making a decision on what level of, of storm, I think that the, the next most appropriate person would be the, the town engineer um, in, in that case. I, I too feel comfortable with the 10 year storm that, that they've designed for, but Jenny, I wanted to get your take in terms of um, the applicant's current work with the town engineer and um, where this is silent in the bylaw. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the first thing is I don't think we can go back in time to consider how, whatever we imagined this might mean <laughs> because now it's, now it's in the zoning bylaw. So it is a requirement and it is a requirement relative to their height. So I think we should be all every all the board members should be on the same page about what you're whatever you are going to choose the also the other thing that we know is that there's nothing about the storm event that we're talking about or planning for so maybe that's something to think about in the future when you do the climate resilient type zoning stuff that we've talked about this sort of separate sorry um i think that the conservation commission and the town engineer will help this applicant to better design um, this particular uh, around this particular issue. And I think that the applicant has actually demonstrated quite a bit when it comes to how they've tried to address stormwater on site, um, given the limitations of the level of what they can possibly do within the scope of the site. Um, so I, I, I think that if you were talking about adding to any sort of special condition, it would be both the town engineer and consideration for the Conservation Commission's review and approval because the commission has been taking into um, into account very seriously both uh, rain events and uh, you know planning at a much higher level and have they have also incorporated climate resiliency into their regulation. So I think that the, I think the applicant will be held to those standards regardless. I guess is where I was going with all of that. Great, thank you, Jenny. That's very helpful. 
Um, Jean, would that address your concerns? I personally feel very comfortable with the level of um, willingness that this applicant has been to work with all of the different commissions and bodies in town. And I think personally that the appropriate person for them to continue working with is the Conservation Commission and the town engineer on this issue, but I'm interested in your thoughts. Well, you know, I started off my statement about that by saying it's an impossible standard. You know, there's going to be a storm size where it can't possibly be retained on site. And I'm sort of sorry we didn't um, take a look at that before it made it into the bylaw and say, wait a second, what are we going to do about this? So, I mean, and we don't want to impose a standard of impossibility on any applicant that comes before us. On the other hand, I'm not sure that a 10 year storm is the right size. Um, and I'm especially not sure for a couple of reasons. One is this only kicks in where they ask for the added height and not if the building was smaller. And second is it is going into Millbrook, which has a whole set of issues and tends to have flooding issues in larger storm events. So I don't know whether a 10 year storm is the right storm event and what the town engineer may in a general way say 10 year storm event is fine. That, that doesn't necessarily work when we have this provision in the bylaw. So I really don't know what to do about it. What I would like to do is, and I don't know how we can do this, is have the town engineer tell us what is the maximum storm that he thinks that they can safely treat and retain on site. Not just him picking 10 years, but what is the maximum storm considering what they've got there that he thinks can be treated and retained on site, which is a different question than just saying, does this work for you, town engineer? And that's what I'd like to know. And then I'd like to know whether the Conservation Commission would consider that acceptable for a stormwater discharge into Millbrook. And then I would say we've overcome the impossibility standard. I, I would suggest that absent of a standard, they have addressed the request and that by adding a special condition for the applicant to work with the town engineer and conservation commission to ensure that the level of treatment is, um, is approved by their bodies would, would, um, would even go beyond, I think, the, the level that's required um, because they are treating it again, absent of a standard, we, we need to review that they've, that they've treated it and they have to a degree. I think, I think that um, again, all of the work they're doing with the Conservation Commission, I would feel very comfortable adding a special condition, identifying um, that group for them to continue working with for the, um, any additional requirements related to um, treatment and storage on site? Well, there, 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 there are two separate issues and I wanna, and they both relate to this. One is what's the maximum that they can reasonably retain and treat on site? And that's an answer that I would like from the town, town engineer. That's different from the conservation's concern about what goes out into the brook because if, the, if they've met the maximum they can retain on site, then the Conservation Commission is basically gonna have to be stuck with that, I think. So I, I would um, 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 and I'm not sure 10 years is the right number and 10 years sounds too small to me. Um, so I would have a special condition that is that it must be um, the maximum reasonable amount that storm event that the um, town engineer determines they can retain on site, treat and retain on site. 
maximum reasonable um, storm event the engineer determines can be treated and treated retained around. outside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that, Gene, with the word adding reasonable. Yeah, well, it has to be reasonable, of course. Yes. I, think, I think if you were, I think we're imposing something that wasn't quite listed. Uh, well, we're, we're trying to. Trying to clarify with, it. We're trying to come up to some way to deal with this bullet I, I point in the regs that are with the bylaw, I mean, that, you know, can be unreasonable pretty quickly. Okay. So we need to move yeah. to the to the next um, app to the next application. However, we have one more item to address before I think we can um, talk about a, a motion for for a vote this evening, and that is the truck turning um, on on site. Um, so is this so, Jean? You yes. Had I think the way to deal with that is to not allow more than two trucks in those bays at the same time, and they can't be side by side in the bays. Then they have enough turning radius. I'm okay with that too. I was going to suggest that too, Jean. Just have uh, two bays for uh, larger the, trucks. The, larger trucks, right. and the other two are for. Right. Uh, and then it's all clear. Yep. You know, yep. The areas that cross over are smaller trucks. Yep. And we're all done. Yep. And according to mm -hmm. the owner, they don't have that many big trucks. So it's not really an undue burden that we're asking here. Right. And put the two larger truck bays so they're not right next to each other. Yep. Great. Yep. So that would be a special condition to not allow uh, greater than two trucks, two 26 foot trucks um, at, at one time and ensure that those two locations are not adjacent to each other. I would uh, change the word, uh, Rachel. I'm sorry? I would change the word, not uh, not the two trucks are not side by side, but I would let the engineer saying that, let the engineer work it out where it would not interfere. So I, I would, I don't know, I, I, I just would say the engineer, I trust the engineer would do the right thing and say, okay, if we're going to relocate these, these are the best choices to locate, not. Okay, so we'll take out not adjacent. It's just not more, not greater than two truck, two 26 foot trucks at any one time. Correct. Okay. That's fine. I can I can go with that. So two. Okay, got it. Um, any other special conditions? Um, and then the other one is for the final elevation to be reviewed and approved administratively with the department with the um, changes that were proposed this evening. Yeah, and I'd like a special condition specifically that they will install and operate the solar on the roof. Yes, I had that one too. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Sure. Rachel, are you going to do a little sketch for Jenny? I can. Uh, I, I, I trust Jenny. I just. No, please do the sketch. <laughs> I would appreciate that, uh, Rachel. I will do that. Install and operate um, solar panels on roof. Any other special conditions, Steve? Uh, everything I've heard sounds fine so far, and I have nothing to add. Okay, uh, Attorney and Essie, do you have any questions or concerns about the four special conditions that were discussed? I do not. Uh, Jesse, how about you? Those work for us. That's good. Okay. Okay. Great. So, is there a motion from the board um, to uh, approve? Docket number 3690 with the following special conditions to install and operate the solar panels on roof, um, on the roof to uh, review, administratively review the final elevations um, for approval with the, uh, with the Department of Planning and Community Development um, that no more than two 26 foot trucks will be allowed um, in the loading bays at any one time. And for the applicant to work with the town engineer to identify the maximum storm event that the engineer determined, the maximum reasonable storm event that the engineer determines can be retained and treated on site. No, the maximum storm event that can reasonably be treated and retained on site, you need to use the reasonably to modify, treat, and retain. Got it. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> All right. 
So motioned. Is there a second? Second. And I'd like to just respond to a couple of the public comments um, before we vote. Sure. Because both um, Mr. Seltzer and Attorney Falwell, who weren't here, and I think one other person may have expressed come some concerns about the height of the building shading some other buildings in the area. I, I just want to say that I, I did think about that and those buildings don't have solar on them and um, they, they don't meet any of the requirements for us to consider shading as an issue. And we are allowing buildings of this height in the industrial zone. So I don't think it's a factor that we can use to deny this permit application. Thank you for the uh, clarification, Gene. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, so we will, at, with the motion in a second, take a vote um, on docket number 3690 with the four special conditions, uh, starting with Ken. Yes. Gene. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Um, we have one board member who is absent this evening. So uh, congratulations. Your permit has been approved. And um, I'll follow up with a sketch um, with the department to pass on to you. And um, the, uh, Jenny and Kelly will also follow up with you regarding next steps. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all your hard work. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, so at this point in time, we'll close agenda item number one and move to agenda item number two, which is the public hearing for docket number 3693 for 89 Alpine Street. This is for a um, accessory family childcare facility for no more than six children. Um, Jenny, I'll turn it over to you first. Well, I, um... I'm actually gonna turn it over to Kelly who has been okay. communicating with the applicant and the applicant um, is obviously here. <laughs> and um, Kelly, do you want me to bring up the application for you? Yes, please. Um, and I do wanna make sure that Nellie um, has access to the interpretation. Um, yeah. Nellie, I don't know if C Ivan is there with you. Or Amanda, if you can help him. CCC, claro que sí. Okay. Um, can you hear Magda interpreting sí. in, in Spanish? Okay, all right, great, thank you. Um, yeah, Jenny, if you wanna bring that up. Okay, so um, this is an application for a special permit under environmental design review to allow the accessory use of a family childcare facility in, um, in a, in the applicant's home. Um, this is where they currently live. The facility is for no more than six children um, and they um, are in operation between 7.30 and 5.30, 7.30 in the morning and 5.30 in the afternoon every day, Monday through Friday. Um, the applicant has also stated that they encourage parents to call before they pick their children up in the afternoon so that they can have the children ready to go um, to limit the amount of time that people are parking on the street or waiting or queuing up. Um, and then the other thing to note is that this applicant has um, already received approval to operate a family child care facility through the Massachusetts EEC. And that is all. Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, Nellie, would you like, is there anything that you would like to say to the board about your application before we see if there are any questions? Sí. Uh, yo no sé, no sé si no me hice entender, pero yo estoy operando ya mi family, hace cuatro años, tengo mi family en esta casa y ya y, y sí me la aprobó para diez niños. Ah, solamente cuando hace cuatro años que yo abrí mi programa, yo fui a la, al City Hall y lo registré, lo, lo escribí, me dieron un, ¿cómo se llama? 
lo que me dieron cuando escribí el negocio. Como un, un, un root, digámoslo, un new. Ahora, y, y así ha estado funcionando todo. Ahora, uh, con lo de la pandemia, eh, me dijeron, yo fui a, a llenar para solicitar un gran de los que estaban dando a los, a los estatal, una ayuda estatal, pero para que el Estado me diera esta ayuda, yo necesitaba tenerlo um, otro tipo de registro, no el que yo había hecho inicialmente. Entonces, por eso fue que lo escribí para este proceso. Pero ya lo tengo funcionando hace cuatro años. Great. Thank you for the clarification. Gracias. Este, la verdad, yo cumplo con todos los requisitos. Eh, nunca he tenido problemas con mis vecinos de parqueadero, nada de eso, porque nunca se hace con glegorasco, o sea, acumulan carros. Siempre viene un papá, se va, luego llega otro, se va y generalmente en el tiempo de primavera y verano no vienen en, en auto. Siempre vienen en cochecito, o sea, no hay obstáculos, obstáculo en la vía pública. Siempre va a estar, siempre está libre. Uh, vuelvo y le digo, ningún vecino se ha quejado, no he tenido problemas con nadie, ni con la ciudad, ni con nada. Um, solamente es ese registro que me dé el City Hall, la, la, la ciudad, de verdad, este, ni yo tampoco lo entiendo. I understand. We'll try and get you um, moved through this evening. So um, what I'd like to do now is to see if any of my um, other board members have questions for you. Um, so, so Ken, uh, we'll start with you. Do you have any questions? No, I have none at this time. Okay, great. Thank you. Jean? Just one question. Are you now at the six a uh, child level or the 10 child level? Son 10. Yo inicié con 6 okay. por 3 años y luego, y, y sí, vino, miró el lugar, las instalaciones, las maestras certificadas y me amplió la capacidad para 10. Thank you. That's fine. Great, thank you, Jean. Steve, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions, Madam Chair. Okay, great, thank you very much. So at this time, um, we'll open um, the hearing up for public comment. So if there are any members of the public who are joining us this evening who would like to speak, please use the raised hand function and I'll call on you in the order that hands are raised. And I'll wait a couple seconds to see if we have anyone. All right, seeing none, we will close public comments and I'll turn it back to the board to see if there is um, any discussion. Uh, to me, it looks like every everything is in order and the applicant has followed all of the requirements of the state and meets the requirements um, that we have, uh, we have listed for um, running a family childcare facility. So I will uh, turn it over to Ken for any additional comments or thoughts. No, none at this time. No. Okay, Jean. Um, my only thought is that we put the same special condition on this one that we put on the previous one that uh, she must maintain her um, child care license with the state. We have the wording from the last time. Yes. Thank you, Jean. I'm just writing that down. Uh, Steve. Uh, nothing further, Madam Chair. Great. Um, Okay, 
so is there a motion from the from the board to um, approve docket number 3693 with the special condition that the applicant maintain must maintain um, their current state child care certifications. Um, so moved. Second. We'll take a vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm yes as well. So congratulations, your application has been approved. <laughs> I appreciate you going through this process with us. I know it can be confusing. So thank you so much. And thank you for providing this service for people in town. Muchas gracias a ustedes. Estam estoy a, su a la orden. Mi programa se llama Sol Solecito. Es un programa bilingüe. Eh, tenemos niños desde tres meses hasta cinco años. Así que a la orden por acá son siempre bienvenidos. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great evening. All right. Muchas um, gracias. De nada. Muchas gracias. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so at this time that closes agenda item number two. Um, and as we are currently out of time, <laughs> Um, what I'd like to do is, I know that we need to adjourn for town meeting. Um, we can, Jenny, there's no reason we need to approve these meeting minutes this evening. I wanna make sure that Jean and Steve have a little time before town meeting starts. We could push these to our next meeting. You could, I mean, there's not any reason to, but I did incorporate all the edits that were provided. Oh, that's right. Steve so and Jean unless there's there anything time. from you okay. or Ken that's significant, Great, let's we go ahead. Try to plow. Thank no. you. Let's, let's go ahead and take agenda item number three then. Ken, did you have any edits? No. Okay, well then we can, this will be quick. I did not either. Um, uh, Steve, did you have anything additional, additional other than what you sent through earlier? Nothing additional. Jean? I had nothing additional. Great. So is there a motion to- Can, um, can we just have Jenny scroll through yeah. it so oh, we sure. can look at it? Let me it. just run, run through, uh, it's eight mm -hmm. pages, so just bear with me. I'm just gonna roll through and you can read it. Right. Okay. Right. Seven pages. Okay. Uh, so is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from April 4th, 2022 as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The meeting minutes have been approved as amended. Um, so that brings us to the end of our agenda this evening. Thank you all so much for working to get through both of those hearings in a short time this evening. I really appreciate it. And um, is there a motion to adjourn to town meeting? So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote, Ken. Yes, also I'd like to apologize. I, I thought I could have sworn the meeting was at seven. <laughs> Understood. We've been bouncing back and forth. No problem at all. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you all, and uh, good luck tonight at town meeting. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. See you next week.